how has your meditation practice manifested over the past years? Are you still using Headspace or have you moved on? Yeah, I'm not using Headspace. Um, I did a Vipassana after my season in 2017. And after that, I was like, or Vipassana for people that don't know, that is uh, uh, the one I did actually, because it varies, was a 10 day silent meditation uh, retreat. And uh, so for those 10 days, all you can do is walk, meditate, eat, sleep. Got to give your phone, computer away. You're not supposed to journal. You're not supposed to really exercise or do yoga. Like you're just there to to meditate. You're you're not supposed to talk. You're not even supposed to look at other people in the eyes. And so after that, I mean, ten hours a day of meditation for ten days straight. I was like, um, I don't think I need Andy from Headspace anymore. <laughs> And so, yeah, it's just a really basic practice, uh, just uh, focusing on the sensation of the breath coming into my nostrils and leaving my nostrils. And then uh, when I get lost in thought, as everyone will in meditation, uh, I'll just try to observe it as quickly as possible, being lost. And a couple routes, so I go from there, one, say, having a creative thought it's like oh this is a great idea because right? i think the best the best idea is coming like stillness right where we have that space like this is a great idea so i just kind of let it play in my head and just kind of go with it and like okay it's really interesting okay 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 when i've had enough it's like okay back to breath maybe if i uh, have a negative emotional trigger <laughs> uh, experience I just observe it, you know, I'm not trying to push it away, run away from it or hide from it. Just observe it. Like, well, am I feeling this? What's going on? And just like sit with it kind of until I find a solution or until it dissolves. And then the third, third situation, it's like, all right, like I'm thinking about something that really doesn't matter at all. I'm just, just the thinking mind going. Like, let's just return to the sensation of the breath. And then I begin again. How did you feel approaching your Vipassana? And what did it feel like when you had completed it? Yeah, I was oblivious. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was like, it's the first day, you know, you can talk to people. And I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. It's just mental toughness. Like, oh. And then by day four, I'm just like, oh, my God, what did I sign myself up for? <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of, like, pain like let me say so much mentally or emotionally because i know that can bring out a lot of people clearly i had a it seems in the vipassana meditation i had a, a very safe childhood as i know for a lot of people it brings up a lot of uh, suppressed experiences moments emotions um luckily i didn't experience that but just the pain of sitting like it hurts it hurts sitting 10 hours a day not really having any breaks and once you go over 30 minutes it starts to hurt and so it's just sitting with that and you know there's a couple different different themes that everyone experiences mm, impermanence right this, this this pain is real but eventually it's not going to be there such is life everything that you experience is impermanent. So just being able to have that foresight, um, equanimity, where it's like, you can focus on the pain or maybe just focus on the sensation. Sensation isn't one way or another, just sensation. And then the power of getting too high or too low is really important too. Um, it's really fascinating. Uh, when they were talking about music and like how it's important to have equanimity towards music. I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Like, why would I not want to get excited about music? But of course there's like that duality, right? Say like when I was younger, I'd go to a club. I was like, this is a great song. Like, yeah, I'm having such a good time. Like, whoa. 
and another song comes on and it's like a song you don't like or a song that brings up a bad memory and you're like now i'm having a terrible time i want to leave this isn't right it's like wait what like a song has that much of an influence of like who i am how i feel and wanting to party all night long to wanting to go home so um you know, through that, through that pain, there was a lot of great lessons. And then going into the ninth day, you know, I was just like suffering, suffering, suffering. And then the 10th day, once you could like, or 11th day, sorry, once you can talk again, it was like the best feeling ever to have like that human interaction again and like to talk about it. I had this experience. I had that experience. Oh my God. And uh, almost kind of what's going on right now in reality, where it's like, we just need connection. Like, as humans we're not meant to be isolated from each other so i think uh it's it's necessary in the vipassana but it's really difficult to to not speak to not connect to not look in people's eyes and just be alone and when you are alone i think you learn a lot much more but of course it's there's a lot of discomfort that is experienced through those 10 days i remember on my 11th day i came out and this guy and i made eye contact and both of us just started weeping. I just saw yeah. a little tear in his eye. And then yeah. I started crying as well. And then we just started hugging. And everyone yeah. just started hugging each other. And it was, this, it was this very, very cool experience. And it was something past language. We didn't talk. I didn't speak Hindi. But we just embraced big hugs all around. Yeah. I mean, my girlfriend was like, oh, I think I want to do a Pashman. I was like, well, just wait for me because I want to do, I do I want to do another one too. There's just uh, there's a lot of power that can come from it. And yeah, after that day, I think connection with other humans just becomes, you realize how powerful and how important it is. What was it like hearing your own voice after all that time? <laughs> I don't remember actually. I just, I just remember being so like happy and being like freed of like pain. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I just don't want to sit anymore. I mean, I get to the point where I did have like kind of some breakthroughs. Uh, I forgot what the name of this was, where it was like this, you know, I, I wanted to have these like sankaras, which I shouldn't have because that's like kind of the rule. It's like you don't, you're not supposed to like research what people experience, right? Because that brings upon craving and craving of that experience that you may or may not have. But speaking with the teacher, he's like, all right, just focus on your breath, focus on your breath. Like really focus on your breath, like everything you do, walking, eating. So I just had like this intense focus and like, I got to the point where it's like the pain just like went away. I felt like my body like radiating and it was like bliss. And it was like such a crazy feeling. I was like freed of pain, free of like worry, anxiety. And, uh, and that lasted for like maybe a half a day. It was like this like deep flow of like bliss. And then, uh, at the end, the guy sitting next to me, he was like, he's like, dude, day seven, what happened? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, man, I felt you. He's like, what now? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, man, I felt you on my body. Like, I, you were like radiating heat. And that was like the day where it's like, that was kind of switched on. So, I don't know. It was a really interesting experience, but um, just becoming very clear of some underlying um values in life that I, I didn't have before that i believe are very beneficial and then just the the power of going within and i think we we have so much strength inside of us but rarely do we access it there's a there are a lot of prison systems now particularly in india that offer vipassana meditation amazing and yeah, it has uh, very cool long-term effects. It's super interesting because women drop out at a far lesser rate than men do. Oh. Yeah. Why is that? I'm not sure. I think uh, 
if I were to analyze it psychologically, I would say that it's probably something to do with the cohesiveness of a group. And I don't think men are as well integrated into their group settings as women are. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the, I mean, the world would be such a great place if more people meditated, <laughs> but for sure they did Vipassana's. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? I can't. I actually can't. It was, uh, yeah, I think I had a very similar experience to you in terms of pain. I remember begging the, whatever he was, the guru at the front for to sit on a chair because my, I thought that I was getting nerve damage in my knees and my hips from mm -hmm. sitting cross-legged. And he said something similar to the idea of equanimity. He said, just observe it. And then there were other people that were able to sit on chairs or they had some kind of adjusted seating and he he got really close to me and he said look at them said, they're not going to get as much as you if you accept this yeah and actually move into it and become one with it but those yeah. people those people are going to get their experience but it's not as much as if you commit to this yeah 100 percent. and i was pretty i was pretty mopey about that it's like oh, I'm, okay my yeah. knees really hurt but okay I was just like, it is crazy too, because like you think about it, it's like, how are everyone else doing this? Like I'm an athlete, like in the best shape of my life and I'm struggling. A lot of people like out of, out of shape, 30, 40, 50 years old, but you know, that's like the same thing. It's like, uh, the message I received in my DMs, everyone's experiencing that suffering and everyone's thinking that they're the only ones experiencing that suffering. 